Hey everybody, it's Lane with Crafty Life Mom and I am back with another video. Today I am going to be setting up my sublimation printer. So let's get started. <music> So I've been wanting a sublimation printer for a little bit of a while now. Sublimation printing, if you're not familiar with it, basically it is a printer where you can print just about any image you want on a specialty paper using a, um, some specialty inks and um, basically taking that and making it into a transfer, the printed sheet, and either heat heating it on or heat pressing it on to a product, like a product blank. For example, a t-shirt or a mug, those are some of the most uh, popular projects that you might be seeing on the internet today. So today I'm actually going to set up my very own sublimation printer. So I've been wanting one of these for a while and when it started gaining popularity a few years ago, I really wasn't interested in it. But here lately I've had, um, some project ideas that I've wanted to do, and so I finally purchased a sublimation printer. And I've gotta be honest with you, it's been sitting in the box for about a month. And that just is because my life right now is so busy and I'm running here or running there and when I craft, I'm usually crafting on the go and since it wasn't set up or I didn't have time to actually um, sit down and like, you know, make sure I had like a couple hours blocked off to maybe go through everything that I need to do or troubleshoot. Um, I just didn't do it. So today is the day. I actually have the time. And so I'm going to record it and show you guys uh, what I purchased and you're going to go with it through it with me as we set this up and hopefully make my first sublimation print. So I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit overhead so you can kind of see what I'm working with. I've just taken it out of the box um, and the power cords and that's about it. I started to take the blue tape off and that's when I decided that I should probably record this and share it all with you. And of course, everything that I have here, I will link down in the description box below. So if you're interested in getting started with sublimation, um, then you can see all the products and materials that I am using in today's video. So let's get to it. Okay, everybody, so I kind of flipped my camera around so that you can see a little background. So this is the printer that I purchased. It is a Sawgrass 500. It actually is the lower model, like they have a Sawgrass SG 1000 and I purchased the 500 because I wasn't sure where I was going to go with this. Um, so it's the beginner model for me and I feel like that's going to work. I've seen a lot of people get this model and do lots of great, amazing things. This is a little bit smaller one. Um, and then this cabinet that you see here, I actually purchased it from Ikea. And so I'm kind of making a whole like printing and heat pressing little station in front of the window here in my craft room. Um, so I purchased it from swingdesign.com. It's a website that um, the Silhouette School blog actually recommends. I think she's partnered with them and she has um, lots of amazing guides for Cricut or no, maybe not Cricut, but for Silhouette and for um, other crafting materials and toys, right? So I just, she was really well known, um, another craft blogger DIYer and so you know some of her advice like I tend to trust and she is partnered with um, swing design so I just you know felt like I would check out their pricing and they were pretty comparable I think they had a special running at the earlier part of the year so um, that was one reason where it was like a little bit cheaper than like other places like you would find it on Amazon or um, other website competitors out there that sell heat transfer type of products and printers. So the other thing too with going with Swing Design is that this ultimate guide for beginners to sublimation, which is written by the Silhouette School blog, um, was included. And so you can see right here, all of the Silhouette School blogs, like different um, 
guides that they have. So I printed off the guide. This is like a download that you get once you get your email. And I printed it off because it walks you through step by step how to set it up, um, what you need, all of that kind of stuff. And then it goes through like the software too. So this was just invaluable to me because when I got the printer like without the guide, what you get is just this little like manual, right? It doesn't really have anything step by step because it's just like any other printer kind of in a box, right? You open it up, you plug it in, you're ready to go. With sublimation, it's not that quick, easy. I mean, it is, but it's not that, you know, fast, I guess, especially if you're new to it. So this guide to me was invaluable to have. On top of that, um, they included a pack of 100 sheets of sublimation paper, which is a special paper that you need that works with the special inks in order to make your sublimation transfer. You can't just do any printer and expect it to like press to your project. Like you have to have a sublimation printer or a printer that you converted. And I think one of the brands out there that people are converting is Epson. And so I actually considered the option of Epson, but when it came down to it, I was like, I want to do sublimation. I want to do it right. So I'm going to get a printer that is designed to do the thing I want it to do. And um, it also comes with a software, whereas the Epson one that people are converting doesn't. And there's workarounds for that one, but I just kind of wanted to go with, you know, the beginner entry level, like easiest way doing it with a machine that's made to do what it's supposed to do. So it also included the paper, which is nice. Um, because you could add that to your cart or, you know, it'd be an extra cost and sublimation, getting started like the ink and the printer, they're not particularly cheap. Okay. And then in addition to that, like I got all of these gift card, um, things, which actually are to, um, so fancy, which is a, another company of the silhouette school blog. And it's a design shop where she gave me, I don't know, I think it was like $500 worth of designs in addition to the printer. So not only do I have the printer and the paper, but in the ink, because the ink was part of their package, I also now have a place to go get designs and pull into the design software that comes with a printer purchase. So for me, the package or the bundle was a win-win from Swing Design, and I'll link down below exactly the one that I got. They have different variations. Um, it has to do with what kind of heat, um, sublimation projects you want to do. So just take a look around when you click on those links because um, I just you want to make sure that you're getting what you're wanting to do. So and then that was basically it. Um, here's the two power cords and I'm going to go ahead and open them. Like I said, I haven't opened this yet. I've watched, since I am making a video on YouTube, I have watched a ton of YouTube videos um, when it came to choosing my software, choosing my printer, and all of the things, um, you know, I think I've watched enough now of people setting up this exact printer that mine is just going to be another one out there uh, for people to choose from. But I just, I don't know, I wanted to make sure I covered um, the reasons why I chose this one, which I did not see in a lot of videos out there. And hopefully if you're looking into getting sublimation, you know, that the reasons why I picked this and where I picked it from will kind of help you decide because, and this is not a sponsor video by any means. So I just want to make that clear. Like all of these opinions and everything that I'm telling you and reasons why I chose that company and this particular package is because I did my homework. I did my research. So much value was included with this package that I felt like I was getting way, way more bang for my buck. Like the $500 in designs, the setup guide and the paper. Plus I think Swing Design gave me a few like extra heat transfer sheets that I could pick out like a color of. It was just crazy. Like that bundle just was a no brainer to me. So, all right, let's get to the fun start. So, so I have the cord um, that this connects the printer to my computer and you do need your computer connected to print. And then this is the power cord that obviously plugs into the back. Now I'm going to put that over here to the side. This is the installation kit. This is the ink. This is the part that I am most um, nervous about 
So in here you can see it says starter card. Oops, sorry. It says starter cartridges, which that's kind of weird to me because I'm pretty sure I I actually wanted the standard ones, which is a little bit more. You can see it's like a little bit more. So when you get the starter one, it's a little less ink. So, and the ink is very expensive on these printers. So that just tells you you're gonna be filling it up the first time a little bit sooner than probably you normally would. And then these are the two different bundles that you can get. You can get the Easy Subly ink or the Sawgrass Subleget ink. I chose to go with brand on brand and get the Sawgrass ink. Sizer or Caesar, everyone argues which way to say it, but um, this is a really good brand, right? They have really great heat transfer sheets, but when it came to the printer, I went brand on brand, and um, I don't know. That was just my personal choice. Obviously, you can do your research on that and decide which one you want. Once you pick whatever ink you go with and enter it into the, once you put it into the printer, that's the ink for life of the printer. So you can't start with Sawgrass and then jump to the Caesar. You actually stay with this one for the life of the printer. So I just want to make that clear because I don't think some people realize that and maybe they have problems because they've mixed their inks. Um, and maybe they haven't if they've mixed their inks, but I just know from my research, you don't want to mix inks. So whatever you choose from the get-go, make sure it's the one you want, like for most variety of projects. And I felt like the Sawgrass Subleget ink was the one that gave me the most variety. The Sizer Easy Subly ink is like, also, is something that you're going to do if you're going to like maybe work more on uh, dark shirts or shirts that aren't they say it's a little bit brighter of an ink based off all the reviews, but I feel like now they have a product out there where you can basically, it's like a white vinyl, put that on your shirt and still print your transfer um, with the Subleget ink and get it just as vibrant. So we'll test it today. All right, so I'm going to finish pulling off all of the tape. And one of the things that um, they said to kind of look out for is as you're pulling off the tape, you want to be gentle with your printer, looking for anything that maybe isn't um, secured right or damaged, that sort of thing. Okay, so I got it plugged in, and what I'm gonna do now is power it on. And it just says, please wait. I think it takes a couple minutes um, to actually go through this process. So I'm just gonna wait like it says. And it says, set the ink correctly. Black, siren, magenta, yellow. So this little door right here is the ink door and it tells you right here it says to use sawgrass approved ink only so and it has the order like black blue or siren magenta and yellow and this is the ink um that came with it and it actually has like a picture steps of how to do the ink so um, let's see. Okay, so the ink, I want to make this clear. The ink um, has an expiration date on it. So if you don't use the ink by your expiration, the ink is no longer good. So it maybe won't you know, it might affect how it prints or I don't, I don't even know. Um, but you know, I'm guessing I would go with, it's just like your food, right? You don't want to eat expired food. So the same goes with the ink here. Same. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and do it. Oh, let's see. Oh, here it is. It tells me 
on this side. So when I pull it out, black. <laughs> All right, so it's saying the sticker's there. It's got the little push. So I'm going to basically just slide that into place. And that feels pretty good. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, look at that. See, I didn't have to worry. You can see the color right there. I'm sorry, my camera keeps shaking. So there's blue or siren. Loading ink for the first time. Wait and do not touch the machine for seven minutes. So that's what it says. So I'm gonna pause the camera and I will come back once it's done doing the seven minute startup. I am at the sawgrassinc.com website. And when you get to their homepage, what you wanna do is go to Creative Studio. It's gonna prompt for you to sign in or create an account if you haven't created an account yet. I just created my account, and so I'm just now um, signed in. So basically from here, you have like, it's pretty basic. Um, they're offering for you to upgrade the software. It actually has um, two folders here where you can create new. Um, you have a favorites folder, galleries, which is like images that you upload, and then it's like a quick link to your favorites, which is also here. So instantly, if you don't have any designs, which this is a new account for me, so I don't have any um, anything in this software, I'm going to go right into start creating. And you see here, it brings up like a basic software similar to like Silhouette Studio or even like Cricut Design Space. It's very basic. So what I want to do is basically print a design and just see how it goes. Um, I have a design that I actually purchased from the internet and so I'm going to try and get that uploaded into the design program here, Creative Studio, and actually get it to print. So I'm just looking around and I'm looking to see if there's anything that says like upload design. It definitely has download, but I'm going to go over here to the left where it says, let's see if it has creations. No. So, or designs. Okay, so my designs. I'm going to open that, and then there's a link there. It says open design. No file is chosen. So I recently just downloaded um, this meow meow design. My daughter is in love with cats, so I thought for sure I have a um, infusible ink Cricut blank little t-shirt. That's her size. So I thought it would be good to put my first sublimation um, which is what Infusible Ink kind of is, um, in a way. Um, so I thought for my first print, I would use that t-shirt and print my design from the printer. So it's loading here. It's taking a minute. Oh, it's, it's not a PSD file. So that might be an issue. So let's see if I could go to galleries and do my image upload a PNG, JPEG, or SVG. So that's something to notate here. So designs are PSD. Galleries are where you're going to upload an image. So I'm going to, and I've got some options here. So I'm going to go to um, upload again. I'm going to select my file and let it do its thing. Okay, so there is my image. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, well, it says progress here, zero. So let's click save. And then you can see the progress is saving it to the Creative Studio software. So I'm just going to give that a minute to load up. And it's I thought those were cute. It's a little picture of two kittens. She actually got a kitten for Christmas. So 
like I said, I thought this would be perfect to put on a little t-shirt for her. Um, all right, so it looks like it's done adding the image. And it's not on my mat, so I'm gonna click it. To, okay, so look at that. It, it actually goes to the full size of this mat here, which I don't even know what that size is yet. So I'm gonna click inches. It says eight, eight and a 8.15 inch by 8.15 inch. Now my paper is eight and a half by 11. So let's see here. I'm gonna go with, okay, so here it says square product details. Let's see. I'm not really sure what happened. Okay. So let me click back on that. I have no idea what just happened. So let's just click undo. Okay, so that's crazy. I'm not sure what happened there, but it's not letting me do anything. So let's try this again. Um, I'm going to pick clothing. Oh, okay. I guess these are items that you can sublimate on and it's giving you a guide. So I'm going to do a youth t-shirt. Do I have to do that? That's really weird. All right. Let's go back to my images. I'm gonna open that. I'm like double clicking. Okay, so I, I, I must have swiped right. So let me swipe again to the left. Okay, it's taking me back to the beginning. Interesting. So. My first impression right now of this software is that it's not everything. Um, it's definitely not the best. Let's see if I can get that cat back on there. There we go. All right, so we're gonna move it back to inches. I'm gonna scroll down. I was trying to get that Um, to make it where I can adjust. And it's like, I'm kind of stuck with this eight and a half by eight and a half image. So I, I don't know if that's, I mean, if that's big enough, it's on a child size small, um, which roughly I feel like, you know, that could work uh, being eight and a half by eight and a half. I guess I could go with it. That's definitely something I'll need to learn is how to um, let me just try something. Oh, okay, so scale. Okay, so we want it to fit the eight and a half by eight and a half box. Okay, and then I notice here like flip. So I'm just gonna go on a limb here. If I flip my design, it's actually backwards, which I know. Since because we're printing this and we're gonna press it onto fabric, we want it to read the correct way. So you would more than likely mirror your image or flip it so that when you heat press it down, it actually is the right way. So from here, I'm just gonna go to print. So I'm still, let's see. I'm gonna try and get back to my design to print again. It says it's loading. It's got my printer now attached. It says tray one, and to my knowledge, it is only one tray. And then it's US letter paper size. Um, I put in eight and a half by 11, so that is the letter size. It's, okay, so the mirror is here, right? But remember, I already flipped it. 
So if I have it flipped and then I tell it to mirror again, it's just going to reflip it back to the front way. So if I turn that off, I'm not exactly sure. I kind of want to like cancel this and flip it back to the correct way and then go to print um, and let it do the mirror option. It just seems like that's the most like the best way okay and then it says the product is going to be um polyester right because we're going to do this on um a shirt and it has to be a polyester true picks classic you know it had a label on the paper and i think i threw it away I think it is the classic. I know it's not the subly colors. It might be the jet coal, but I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna keep it classic. We want to print high quality photographic color palette disabled. We don't want that disabled, I don't think. I'm not sure. All right, so it doesn't look like there's another option to get there, so Let's see if there's one here. Photographic or vivid? Hmm. I'm not even sure which one would be better. Um, I'm going to leave it on photographic because I feel like that's the default. And I'm going to go ahead and click print and see what we get. So this is my sample print here. I'm not sure exactly how big it's going to be, but let's give it a whirl and click print. Says it's loading. I'm looking at the printer. Everything is connected. And this is like that scary moment where you're just kind of like, what's happening? Is it talking? Um, we don't know. So, print has been successfully queued. Okay. Oh, there they go, offering me the print manager. So I'm in my print queue. You see here how big, okay, so look, it shows you the eight and a half by 11 paper, and it shows you how big that design is gonna print. Um, I would have tried to make it a little bit bigger than this, but I feel like it's gonna be okay because it is on a um, child's t-shirt. And then it's like right back in here to the print manager. So it looks like from here, I can actually make it bigger. Oh yeah, look at that. So I'm making it a little bit bigger um, just by doing it right here. So that's pretty awesome. And then color, it's telling me um, different things. So I like how it, it expanded it here, like it gave me that option. So let's try the print again, because it's in the print manager. Um, new system, updating firmware. I guess I need to update. Do not turn off or unplug your printer while the update is in progress. So it's going to take another five minutes to update the firmware. I don't know why it's not updated because I, like I said, I just took this out of the box and plugged it in, but maybe because it's had an update since I purchased it. I, I'm not really sure um, if that's what that is, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's why. Um, so I'm going to pause my video and then we will come back and I will show you what it looks like or how it actually is printing. Okay, so here it is. It's printing my image and I think it's done. And it did print it in reverse. So... Let's, I'm gonna take it over to my little craft table and I'm gonna fire up the heat press. Um, 
and let's see how this turns out. Okay, so I'm back on my craft table and I'm not really sure how this is gonna go, but um, I have cut some of that butcher paper out and I have my design here. I have my blank. Um, this is a Cricut, it's an infusible ink blank, but you can use it for um, sublimation because essentially my understanding is that infusible ink is the Cricut word for sublimation. So it kind of works like one and the same, um, but your shirt does have to be like a polyester type of blend. So that's what's important when it comes to doing sublimation. Um, so a couple of things. Um, number one is we want this design. I'm gonna move this over to the side. We want to make sure it is like lint free. And then we also want to make sure that our design is um, completely like not going to ble bleed through to the back side of the shirt, like through the under the under side. So I cut out two pieces of um, butcher paper just to kind of prevent any kind of bleed. I'm gonna check this really quick, just so I know it says, let's see, polyester. It's like 95% polyester. So that's just one thing. Like you don't have to buy the Cricut brand, um, whatever shirt you're buying, just make sure it's the 95% polyester um, blend. All right, so I'm gonna take the lint roller and I'm just gonna like get anything off the shirt. I know I just took it out of the package, but I just wanna make sure that I it's like lint free. Okay, and then I'm going to um, put my press on it just to kind of get out those wrinkles. And like, we're learning together through this since this is my first time doing a sublimation. I'm gonna do this again. Oh, look at that. Just to make sure like it is free of anything we don't want. And the reason you do this I mean, you can totally skip this step, but I don't think you want to because anytime you have any anything like left in there, um, it could cause like a blue dot or something like that. So I'm just gonna fold this paper. Let's see. I kind of want it to, I wish like I had it doubled up, but it's okay. So I just, I want it to be like the whole width of the shirt. And I'm gonna get this from the inside now. And it's gonna be kind of tricky, but you know, new crafts, new learning, right? Okay, so I'm just kind of, down in there a little bit. Okay. So it's like that. All right. So that looks pretty good. All right. So nice and protected. I'm going to do it again because I don't know what any lint or anything like on. I'm just trying to be as careful as I can be. And I know this is like my first project. I know it can only get like hopefully better from here, but we learn, right? Okay, so there's where it's at. So there's like the collar for her shirt. Um, I did see where a couple people tear the edge of their design um, to kind of prevent that weird square box, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you've ever done, oh, I don't want to tear the, 
If you've ever done a, um, and I'm trying not to touch the ink at all, just notating that. If you've ever done any kind of heat press design or where you've like purchased a transfer, I know I have, and like it didn't come out right, obviously, because I didn't have the right kind of shirt or um, it had like a big square from my heat press. I had a larger heat press that I used and it just was like, you know, you could see where it like had the burn of the square of the design. So I'm just, by tearing it like this, I'm trying to avoid that. I heard that if you tear it, it kind of creates like a feathered edge. And then it doesn't really show this weird square on the outline. So that's kind of the reason for the tear here. And I don't know if I can do it perfect, but we're gonna give it a whirl. Live and learn, right? All right, maybe this side. It's gonna be real hard with that cattail. And again, I'm trying not to touch any of the ink. And you can kind of see there's like a weird dot right there. So I wonder if that's gonna show up on my project. I don't even know. Oh, I tore it a little bit. Dang it. Right at the end. Oh, well. I'm going to have to go with it. All right. So, like I said, I want to put this face down. So, I'm going to kind of just eyeball it. Like, for me, where that center would be. Like that. And then I have tape. That's heat-resistant tape. I'm going to tape it down into place because I am using my Cricut... Um, press. So I don't think because this design is small enough that I will have to move it around like it can just stay right there with some pressure. But in the future going forward, I think I'll be using my big heat press for these kinds of projects, especially like t shirts. I think that's gonna matter in the game there, so, all right. I think that's enough. Maybe I'll do one more right there. This tape is not tearing very well. Okay, and then what I wanna do is put another piece of butcher paper so I don't burn anything on my shirt. Right, and then look, you can kind of see where, I'm just gonna cut that off because this is like where the roll kind of started. I definitely don't want anything to interfere like that, okay? And then, let's see, let me clean up my mess. We're gonna do a Teflon sheet on top of that. I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's completely necessary, but I think it's necessary. So there we go. All right, moment of truth, right? We're gonna press the image and see. So I have it at 400 degrees. The book and like the transfer all say um, to press it for a minute. So I'm just gonna try and make sure I get it centered on my image here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start my clock, pressing on it. And I'm gonna let it go for two 30 seconds. So one full minute, um, just like this. And I think I'm covering my entire image for the most part. Um, I don't think I'm leaving any of it out. So, it's gonna beep, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it, I'm gonna slightly slide down, and let it go for another 30 seconds. I'm so nervous, I hope it turns out. <laughs> uh, it's just craft products, just craft supplies, if anything. All right, so 
about seven seconds. Oh, I moved a little bit. Oh, I hate when I do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift it up and it's kind of have like a little steam there, a little smoke. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it cool, I think, before I completely reveal. We're gonna do it slowly. So you can kind of see there the um, the paper burned on the edge there. Do you see that? So I don't know if I have like a little brown spot now on my shirt. I'm gonna hope and pray that I don't, but if I do, like I said, it's my first one. So note to self, I'd have to cover my entire project with the paper. So, okay, it looks like so far so good, like it came out. And then see like how the paper is brown, kind of has like that, that darker color of the paper, so it's no longer good. And then you can see here how the image actually bled even on the butcher paper. So that's garbage now. That's why you want to save on that butcher paper, that big giant roll from Sam's Club, because it's way more bang for your buck, right, for the amount that you get. All right, so let's see. I'm just going to... Kind of let it cool. See how, it, oh, it's already cooling. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off very carefully. Let's see what we got here. See what result we are left with. Of course, the last one's going to be hard. Just holding it down into place. Oh, oh my goodness. I saw a peek of it. Okay. Here we go. I know my M got cut off already because I ripped it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, guys. Look. Okay, so it's not like perfect because I ripped my M. And I had that little line. Remember I said, oh, I wonder if that's gonna go on there. So if I have that again, that's a lesson right there. I probably wanna cut that because that's kind of like a flaw there. But look at it overall. I think it's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out the paper from in between. And look, you can kind of see where the Cricut Press was. Okay, and then, oh my goodness, I think this turned out completely adorable. So, let's just see what the back looks like. Okay, no bleed through. And nothing on the inside, like nor the normal, right? So I think it turned out really awesome. What do you guys think? I think that's, uh, that is so adorable. Let me hold it up a little bit closer. Look at that. I think the colors are pretty good too. And I don't really see any like, you know, square press of anything. Like there is a line right there, but I think that just, yeah, I think that's just where it like made like a crease, like where it was folded. But I think this is so adorable and so fun. I'm going to be very excited, um, I think, to do sublimation shirts and add that to my crafting arsenal. I think my whole image is a little off to the left a little bit, but I think overall this is super adorable, super cute. You guys leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. 
Okay guys, so that is it for today's video. I just wanna say thanks for coming along with me on my journey today and setting up my sublimation printer. I definitely think my first project was a pretty good success. It definitely has bright colors. Um, my daughter is going to enjoy this design and I can't really believe how easy it was. I don't really know why I waited this long to get into sublimation, but I am so glad I did. I definitely have a lot of more ideas brewing in my mind and I definitely can't wait to work through those projects and share them all with you. That's all I have for today. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Stumbled through learning.